AMD's Ryzen 7000 chips just got announced and it got me thinking about a thought experiment of what would a fully next gen system from AMD look like. So we're gonna be detailing that starting from the high end down to what a more affordable option for you would be if you're looking at picking up something like a Ryzen 5. A lot of the things we're going to discuss are estimated guesses based on previous trends from AMD to try to figure out what the pricing and specs will be on the next gen stuff from AMD, especially since they've given us such limited information for now. But there are things that we are sure about. We are going to have to buy a brand new motherboard for the AM5 socket. You are going to have to buy DDR5. And if you're picking up a next gen GPU, you may indeed have to pick up a new power supply as well. So in AMD's unveiling of the Ryzen 7000, it is clear that we are only getting a 16 core chip out of this next gen CPU because there are only two CPU chiplets, which means the 7950X will likely be 16 cores and 32 threads. Now, AMD hasn't given us a ton of information on what all of the clock speed would be, but they did show it off running 5.5 gigahertz at one point. And based on their estimations, it should be about 15% faster in single threaded workloads. And given AMD's price history from the 3950X costing 749 and the 5950X costing 799, I could potentially see them charging up to 899 for the 7950X. The 7900 XT has a lot of rumors surrounding it. The Navi 31 chip is supposed to be almost three times as powerful as the current 6900 XT that's out there, coming in at 73 teraflops of performance, running at roughly three gigahertz on the clock speed compared to the current 2.4 gigahertz that you find on something like the 6950 XT. We're also expecting it to have 24 gigabytes of GDDR6, and that memory is supposed to be clocked to have a memory bandwidth of 864 gigabytes per second, which is roughly 50% faster than what you could find on AMD's current solutions. Looking at previous price history that's going on with the GPUs, the Radeon 7, AMD's previous flagship was 699, then the 6900 XT came out at 999, and the 6950 XT came out at 1099. I could potentially see AMD pushing their 7900 XT with its higher end performance, with its faster memory, to be something in the neighborhood of 1299. And then if you're trying to build that highest end AMD system, you're gonna want to get their highest end motherboard, which is going to be the X670E, where E stands for extreme because you're supposed to take it to extreme overclocking. Now, taking a look at current motherboard pricing, it stands to reason that the X670E is gonna line up with things like the godlike motherboard from MSI or the Oris Extreme from Gigabyte. And I'm gonna estimate roughly an $800 price point for the entry level version of the Extreme motherboards. When you add an $800 motherboard, $900 CPU, and a $1,300 GPU together, you're looking at $3,000 from the get-go with just the new parts from AMD. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room here because AMD could keep the same prices for their flagship products, but they haven't really done that generation over generation and have continued to raise prices, so I'd say that we're within a decent ballpark. But then you add on to that the fact that you're gonna need DDR5 RAM, and if you wanna build a high-end system with 32 gigs, that's gonna cost you roughly $300 right now. And then because you're building with a 7900 XT, you will likely need either a new power supply that has enough power pins to support the new PCI Express 5.0 connector, or you'll need a new power supply that has the PCI Express 5.0 connector from the get-go, which there aren't many that are released right now, but I'm going to assume that they're roughly within the same price ballpark of current generation stuff. And then because the X670E does support PCI Express 5.0 storage, based on the price indication of going from 3.0 to 4.0, we're gonna roughly double the cost of a 4.0 drive. So I'm assuming you'll put two terabytes into here. You add all of that together, you throw in a $200 case and another $200 CPU cooler for the 7950X, and you're looking at roughly 45 $500 to go all in on AMD's flagships for the next generation. With this high extend system, I'm expecting at 73 teraflops that we could potentially see gaming performance at 4K, 144 hertz, highest settings, potentially even a good 8K, 60 hertz card. According to all the rumors, this next generation is looking to be a mighty beast when it comes to gaming. But thankfully, that's not where it has to be in case you want something that's a bit more reasonable, like an eight core 16 thread chip like the Ryzen 7 7800X, which I'm presuming will exist. Hopefully it has as much improvement with a 15% single performance uplift versus the current generation. But again, based on AMD's price,
price increases, I expect the 7800X to go for $499, which is a $50 price jump from where the 5800X landed. Now, the rumors on the mid-tier GPUs from AMD, like the 7700 XT, are a bit harder to place, but we're going to assume that it's going to land somewhere in the 45 to 50 teraflop region, which is going to make it faster than the 6950 XT. It's going to have the same memory of 16 gigabytes, but the improvements are going to come from the clock speed, again, running roughly 3 gigahertz. Based on historical pricing data, I could see that this card could sell for $899. AMD says it's a $200 discount versus the 6950 XT, and you get a faster GPU altogether. Now, for this mid-end system of what AMD has coming next, we're going to throw in only 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. We're going to assume you get a one terabyte PCI Express 5.0 SSD. And because you're not getting the highest end chip, you probably don't need the highest end motherboard. With the X670 motherboards, I looked at roughly what a good X570 motherboard costs right now, and it's easy to assume a price point of roughly $400 for that. So you have a $400 motherboard, a $500 CPU, a $900 graphics card, $205 for the RAM, and then the rest of the components rounds you out to roughly $3,000 for a mid-tier setup from AMD on the next generation. For this mid-tier system, I would expect that it does really well at 4K 60 hertz gaming. That's something the 6900 XT shines in and having the faster Zen 4 cores on the 7800X will likely make it so that you can maintain really good frame rate in case you want to do 1440p 240 FPS. Now let's look at the low end version of what we're expecting AMD to launch with something like the Ryzen 7 7600X. This is a good assumption to make because when AMD came out with the 5000 series, the lowest end chip they released was the 5600X, and they also just released the Ryzen 3 4100. So to expect them to release another low end chip soon is not really what AMD does. And again, Based on pricing data, we're expecting the 7600X to come in roughly the 299 to 349 price point. Again, 15% faster than the current 5600X. And then the GPU you would pair with that is the RX 7600 XT, which by all indications, this Navi 33 GPU should be exactly as fast as the 6900 XT, but has less memory that's a little bit slower, only coming in at 288 gigabytes per second, but having roughly the same compute performance of 23.7 teraflops as the 6900 XT. And for the lower end chip, you can go ahead and get the B650 motherboard, which based on price indication of good B550 motherboards, we can assume will cost roughly $200 upon launch. You add in 16 gigabytes of low end DDR5 RAM, you're looking at $160 for that, a $200 motherboard, a $300 CPU, and then the 7600 XT is expected to cost $699. Round up all of the rest of the money and you're looking at roughly a $2,000 entry point in order to get the lowest end system that we're expecting AMD to launch for the next gen. I would expect that this low end system is probably going to be really good for 1440p, 144 hertz gaming, and probably even 4K 60 FPS medium gaming. Even if you're not gonna upgrade your GPU and your power supply and everything else, and you're just looking to get a motherboard, a CPU, and you'll have to go DDR5 RAM, you're looking at a minimum price entry of roughly $600 to $700 to get the lowest end chip of the 7600X. You're looking at roughly $1,100 for the 7800X, and you're looking at $2,000 if you're looking to get a 7950X, highest end CPU, highest end motherboard, and then pretty good DDR5 RAM to match it. I want to hear from you. Do you think this would be worth it? What do you think of AMD's Ryzen 7000? And are you excited for the RX 7000 series as well? Let me hear from you down below in the comments.